Uh, so, Leo, I, um, I've always loved football. Uh, like most people, dead eager at playing, loved it. Um, but the thought of being a coach was never on my radar. Um, I hated school, so that sound, coaching sounded a lot like being a teacher to me. So that's kind of negative connotations. I never wanted to go down that road. Um, but my dad was, the, uh, was my coach my boys team. And he was the opposite. He absolutely loved it. He loved his coaching. Um, you know, he was one of the guys that had his bag of balls and he was there on the page. Absolutely loved it. Um, so he used to drag me along to all the coaching courses he did. Um, and being shy and young at the time, I hadn't realised how um, how much of a benefit this would be to all the coaches who were there, all the old guys, for me to have, you know, eager young legs running around on a coaching course is quite... It's quite good if you've done the coaching courses, you know what I mean. Two-day coaching course, you're knackered, aren't you? So yeah. I was eager. I was one of the eager kids that used to run around and do all the all the sessions. But that led me to getting my level one and my, my level two dead quickly. So I was quite young when I was doing it. I just ended up jumping on the course with the, with the guys after I did it a few times. Mm-hmm. Um, so that led me to getting my coaching course uh, qualifications quite early. Um, at the time, um, I was doing a cabinet maker's apprenticeship, and I'll be honest, Leo, wasn't the best. Mm-hmm. Um, my um, my boss wasn't the best. He didn't really uh, train us very well, so that kind of ends up you mess around a lot, don't you? So, yeah. Um, I on the twenty third of December at the Christmas party, they told me not to come back the next year. <laughs> so that's that's how that's the truth about how my coaching journey started. Okay. Um, like I said, my dad loved it, and he had moved to America a few years earlier. So uh, that explains the messing around in the party I was doing. I was home alone for, mm. uh, for a few years, uh, like when I was 17, 18. So um, I got, it was two weeks after my 21st birthday. I went home for my dad, told him what happened, and he basically said, right, you're on the next flight out to America, and you're working here. So uh, I had my level one and my level two. I didn't have much coaching experience. So off I went, um, next flight to America, and I, and I just loved being in the sunshine. I liked, um, I liked doing that, I liked being on the pitches, like playing morning till night. Um, and I knew that it was a case of sink or swim. My dad wasn't going to put up with any nonsense, so I'd be on the next flight back home to Scotland if I didn't knuckle down. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, like I said, I absolutely loved it. Um, we met lots of amazing people. Um, you know, lots of different kids, lots of different cultures, and I just absolutely loved it, and it, and it kind of set me up. I was three and a half years in America, um, and uh, and yeah, it was just everything about it. I just I just loved it. But nice. it was time to move, so we, we then came back to to Britain, um, and then I got a job working at Manchester United Soccer Schools. And then I spent uh, a year or so traveling down, traveling around the south coast of England. I've probably been to every town in the south, delivering a a, a holiday club, um, a soccer school, mm. and that that obviously the more you do that sort of stuff, and the more it leads to different things. Um, but yeah, being in a van with ten lads, I absolutely love that traveling from town to town. Having a Friday night off to go go out, it was just I just loved it. Um, mm-hmm. But that then led to the the guy that was running our uh, our our group. Um, he got offered a job in Malta uh, for Bobby Charlton Soccer Schools, um, and I had said to him that it would be fantastic and I'd love to do it. And he was so lucky. Um, but he went out there and he didn't like it. Surprise, surprise. Mm-hmm. And that led to a phone call for me to go out and do it. So I jumped at that and I was off to Malta for for a couple of years. Wow. And I ran the Bobby Charlton Soccer School in Malta. Wow. Um, and I've got nothing bad to say about Malta and the Maltese people. I yeah. absolutely, Mediterranean lifestyle is just where I'm going to end up when I'm an old man. <laughs> uh, I absolutely loved that. That was just fantastic. And the, the club grew from, uh, when I was there, from it had uh, dirt pitches to, to then having the AstroTurf cages to then having a full-size, a full-size AstroTurf and then a, uh, a little stadium attached to it, so the club's gone from strength to strength. But mm-hmm. you know, I spent two and a half years there, and I absolutely loved that. But um, yeah, my uh, my wife or girlfriend at the time came over as well, so we were living together in Malta. 
Um, but we, you know, we're getting to that stage, getting to that age where starting a family was on the cards, and, and we didn't want to do it in Malta, so we came back, and and I I ran, um, I got offered a job running the soccer school at Centre Parks, so mm. I ran that for a little while, and that led to me running my own coaching business and working for Carlisle United and in, uh, in their academy. So yeah, that's that's my coaching story. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. Uh, so you currently have a coaching business. Yes, so I do. Tell tell the audience first of all where where you're based at the moment, and tell tell the audience a little bit about what what your business is called, what you guys specialize in. Uh, so we are called Sportivos. Uh, we're in the northwest. Um, we 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 coach a whole variety of of. Uh, different things so the the core is the football classes because that's what I'm, I do I'm a football coach um, but we have a schools program and with the schools program we do different things we have a thing called count on sport which goes into the school and works with the children that struggle with being in the classroom environment so we we link it to the curriculum and do do different things with them and um, lots of holiday clubs all, all the usual things that, that we do but the the core for the the, the the weekend classes is um, is football. Uh-huh. Um, we've re- recently sold our first franchise. Um, well, we've sold we sold our first one. We've recently got a second one on the go uh, for Scotland um, in Stirlingshire. So that's quite exciting, getting that through. Um, so we're now trying to go to help coaches become business owners. Uh-huh. Um, a little bit similar to what you're doing, help them along the way, but instead of um, just giving them the advice and the programs like you do, we're offering the opportunity to become business owners with Sportivos, um, and we're trying to do franchising differently. So lifting the restrictions, um, a lot of franchises they niche down to one sport. Some of them are even niching down into one age group. Mm-hmm. So we're trying to lift those restrictions and making it more accessible for um, you know if they, if they want to. If they want to, like obviously I specialise in football, which is fantastic. Football is a gateway sport to get everybody in. But if you, I believe if you just focus on that, you kind of limit the pool of coaches you can attract. Mm-hmm. And then you can, you limit the, the the opportunities for the families that you're attracting. Um, obviously, it's more, the most important thing in business is to acquire customers as cheaply as possible. Um, whichever way you want to do that and then make that customer value as high as possible. Mm-hmm. So um, we believe that just offering that one thing makes it difficult to compete. And, uh, and uh, you know, if you've got someone in the family that doesn't want to play football, um, but you know they'd like to do something else, we want to give an opportunity to do that and give something else. Um, and our approach is to make sure that that customer journey is as easy and as positive as possible so they want to stay within the business. Fantastic. Um, so yes, it's about helping coaches and helping um, families. Okay. The community. Great, it's great. So how, how long have you been in business at the moment? Uh, so I've run, well, I've been in business for the whole time, really. <laughs> I feel like I've been self-employed since I started. So yeah, it's, uh, it's been a long journey. If I tell you, I'll be giving away my age. <laughs> perfect so scott tell us a little bit about so what what's been your biggest obstacle or challenges since you started uh, sportivos uh so i think the, the biggest obstacle that i find throughout my whole journey is finding good quality people to come into the business mm-hmm. um uh, obviously i know lots of business owners uh everybody seems to say the same thing yeah. Um, finding quality staff is, is, is always going to be a problem. Um, like I said about my journey, I started this coaching journey because I wasn't a great member of staff. Um, you know, so I, I get it. Um, the, the longer that you're in business, the more you think it's the, it's the staff's fault and not so much the business's fault. But I just think it's the way it is. Finding good people that you can bring in is, is, a, is, is always going to be difficult. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's why we want to make them business owners. You know, when you get a good coach, to make them business owner and get skin in the game. So, mm-hmm. you know, that that definitely helps as much as you can. Uh, we try our best to 
to bring them into the business and give them opportunities, you know, operations jobs and back end jobs and marketing jobs. But there's there's only so many of them you can you can give. Yeah. Um, so yeah, making them business owners and letting them branch out is is uh, is what we're hoping to do. Um, but with that said, finding venues, marketing stuff. You know, if you're trying to do, um, if your marketing and, and efforts are all based around paid adverts, it's, it's a struggle because mm -hmm. you're giving all your money to um, to Zuckerberg, aren't you, on Facebook, and 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 he's changing algorithms all the time. It's it's, I find that very difficult. So that's a big challenge for me. Mm -hmm. uh, so we try and do it differently and try and get word of mouth with parents and customers and give customers a fantastic opportunity and fantastic customer experience instead of, you know, just hitting paid ads all the time. Um, mm. It's uh, it's fine. But, yeah, so finding venues is an issue. Coaches are an issue. Um, mm -hmm. Everything that costs money in a business is an issue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, trying, it's always trying to set those costs up. Okay. Perfect. So for any coach that's watching and, and is in the UK and might be struggling with uh, looking for the venue, um, as you have just mentioned, so what's a couple of tips you can give the give to them when looking for a facility? Um, well, it's very hard if you don't have an end to these venues. Mm -hmm. So we have... If you if we go to a venue, say it's the local Astro Turf or the local community centre, the chances are it's going to be quite expensive, um, and they will have their own kind of they'll have their own thing going on. So you're essentially trying to compete with them. So you're not really going to get the best time slots that suit you because they'll be taken. So I like to try and help the the local community. And, Again, going back to our schools program, if we're going into schools and we're offering uh, programs that help them, then the next logical thing is hiring their venues. Mm -hmm. um, and that's an income. Schools are, no school's got money in the country, I believe. So, you know, if you've got an in, you've got a way to speak to the, the bursar at the school, that helps a lot to get the venue. And, you know, you're giving them something so they're, they're more likely to give you something back. Mm -hmm. um, if you just phone them up and say is a whole bit available or can we hire your venue it's, it's, you, you know, you're going to end up paying a premium for it and you're going to be battling so my advice is you know, that networking, can you get an in already, can you help them, can you give them what they want um, and support them with their, their, their school, you know, can you support them with their um, sports day at summer, so sports days are coming up you know, can you go in there and deliver their sports day for them, you know, no, I'll do it for free. I'll, I'll do it in return for handing out some flyers. And yeah. that creates reciprocity. And then they're, you know, when you ask them, you know, have you got a hall available? Can I can I book your hall for a, a regular booking and I'll book it for the next year? They're thinking, yeah, that's, that's, I'll, I'll, I've got, it is available. There is a slot. You can have it, you know, yeah. they know you. You know, it's, it's, it's a lot easier than making a cold call and trying to get in somewhere. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now, how do you, because I do get asked that quite regularly, coaches reach out and they want to build those connections with schools. So how, how would you go about building those initial connections with, with the schools in your local area? Well, the first thing is making a connection. Mm. If you go in with, uh, can I do this? I'll deliver that. I'm really brilliant. Look at me. What, everybody's doing that. Why would you get in? So it's a case of can you showcase what you're doing? Um, is your program good enough to deliver? You know, and you do have to give away for free to to showcase. Mm -hmm. um, you need to have all your qualifications in place. You need to have your DBS checks so they they can you know you can prove that you're trustworthy and you can go in and deliver it. Yeah, I hope that's just a, a starting point for everyone anyway, and they have that. Yeah. If they have that, then it is a case of finding out what the school needs, what the school wants. You can go on to the, most schools' websites and they'll have a list of activities. They'll have their their school, um, sorry, the, the, the things slipped my mind. Uh, mm -hmm. um, they have a list of how they're spending their money. 
basically yep. what I'm trying to say. Uh, you know, you need to read that. You need to research it. You need to look at their website, find out who you need to speak to. And then you need to reach out to them and offer them something that will help the school. Um, you know, is it a, are, are they needing a coach? Are you are you looking and finding out that they're they're recruiting all the time for staff and they need to fill a slot? And, you know, maybe you're offering to fill that slot for them on a Tuesday morning because you're free um, and you're not saying I'm going to charge you 50 quid an hour for it. You know, mm. m- make it so, you know, make it free, make it so it just covers your costs, make it so it's valuable to the, the school and you can showcase them what you're all about. Mm. Um, and then you've got an in there and it's not a cold call because you've got a gatekeeper in every school. You know, the secretary is... It is there, she's getting bombarded with emails and calls every day. So you need to get through that by offering something different. Um, mm-hmm. That's what I believe. But then I believe that for your your customers as well. You have to give them something that they need. You know, mm-hmm. you have to find out what that is and give it to them. Fantastic. So how, how many schools do you currently work with? Uh, we've got a lot of schools. We've uh, Some schools come, come and go. They do... Um, uh, you know, some might do a six-week block. Some are booked in for the whole year, doing the holiday clubs. Some with the Count on Sport programme are booked in and we just go from age group to age group and then we start over. Mm-hmm. Um, so every school is different. Um, I've got a coach doing about 70 hours, um, 70 hours a month in schools coaching. So nice. that? 15 hours a week maybe in schools. Yeah. So we do a lot. Um and then we use, mostly we use schools for our, our classes. Um, we do a lot of little kids' classes um, instead of the big ones so that we have continuity by having them indoors all the time. We can run them rain or shine. We don't have to worry about the, the weather. And then on good weather days, we're outside on the grass and on their mugger courts. So um, we do a lot of schools. We do a lot of school work. We do lots of, um, at this time of year, we're doing lots of events, um so uh school fun days school fairs um sports days um yeah. we're doing lots of it at this time of year um oh, it is harder during the winter because you're timetabled in it's very hard to get the slots but mm-hmm. um, that's where we go back to the the regular weeklies that book us for all, all the time and then during the summer months when it's lovely weather um we get to do more after school clubs we do a lot of them <laughs> yeah yeah Perfect. So I'll, I'll take you back to when you f- first started working your with your first school. So what? how did you approach that school? Did you go into the school directly? Did you call them? Did you email them? What was the initial um, touch point? I think the most important thing I can stress here is it is very, very difficult to get mm. into schools. Yeah. Once you get into a school, you stay in the school and then it's, it's down to messing it up. Really, if you can get into school and deliver, uh, you will stay into the stay in the school for a long time. Uh, a lot of my connections with schools um, happened early doors, and I'll tell you a story about that. I worked for the FA where I am, and I was given a hundred hours of coaching for free. I, so I was paid to deliver a hundred hours of coaching, and I was given a hundred pounds worth of equipment for every school. Okay. Now, that sounds like the easiest sell in the world. Mm-hmm. And I'll, I'll, I'll be amazed if anyone has an easier sell than that. <laughs> it wasn't easy to get past the gatekeeper. I was offering them uh, whatever they wanted hours-wise, because I had 100, 100 hours to give away, and I had 100 hours worth of equipment. And I, and I found that it, it all boiled down to demonstrating that I wasn't a fly-by-night and I could actually deliver. Yeah. Um, they're giving me a class of 30 kids. Could I handle those kids? Uh, was I going to offer something different from everybody else that rocked up with a bag of balls? Um, could I handle the discipline and the children and could I get them motivated and excited about what I was doing? It was a sales job, wasn't it? You've got to sell yeah. this to the 30 children every day. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it was, it was very much a case of could I get to speak to the correct person in the school? And again, if you go on the website, you can find out who the sports coordinator is. If you can't get through to the head, get to the sports coordinator. Um, and then, uh, and then, yeah, get in and deliver. And, and um, once you get through the door, once you get to know them, if you can speak to them face to face and deliver a session, then you get in that school and you'll be, you'll, you'll be laughing. Um, and you have to give them a product that's 
valuable to them um, because the budget is very, very tight and they've got to make it last. Yes. Okay. Fantastic. Great, great, um, great information there. So, Scott, a uh, two-part question. First of all, how many kids are you currently training on a, on a weekly basis? Um, and the next one is where do you see your, your company in the next five years from now? Uh, so we have so the, the, the franchise that we've got running now has 211 children, I think, uh, and they are only coming to the weekend football classes. Okay. Um, I, 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 I can't give you a figure on the schools because, you know, there's different numbers in different schools. Yeah. So we've got a full schools programme uh, and then we do birthday parties and all other mm. stuff that we do. Uh, but for the weekend class, it's 211 children we've got running. Wow. Okay. Fantastic. So it's going to keep you busy. So, but that's only um, about 16 hours a week, believe it or not, because the classes wow. are quite full. So, yeah. Uh, you make, and we have a, a monthly subscription I believe in the a continuity program to keep, um, and that'd be a, my advice to coaches if they're setting up on their own. Uh, they need to try and get a, a continuity program in place because if you're running blocks of six weeks, eight weeks, ten weeks, whatever you want to do, if you're doing pay-as-you-go sessions, um, letting people rock up and pay, uh, then you are well. You, firstly, you're asking people if they want to continue constantly. Do yeah. you want to keep coming? Do you want to keep coming paying? Whereas I think you should be confident enough in your program, put them into a monthly subscription, and then you know make sure they stay forever. Yeah. So you've not got that churn. If you're asking them to pay on the day, where I live in the northwest is dead safe. Are you, you're in London, I believe, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The thought, the thought of having a bag of money on the side of a pitch in London. It's crazy to me. It just means, you know, I, I couldn't imagine doing that. And then if you've got, how do you do your registrations? You're doing that on an iPad or on a phone. It yeah. just sounds like a recipe for disaster. In, yes. a, in a big city, you know, you know, get get everything online, get it continued to get people paying. It reduces all your admin costs. It reduces, uh, sorry, all your admin time. It reduces all your headaches. I hate asking people for money. I hate phoning people saying that they're, you know, you want to re-register that's anxiety for me i don't want to do it so yeah um uh, so yes we have all our children paying on a monthly subscription so it makes it very easy for us we know who's coming next week we know who's booked in we know how much money we're making so we can add that towards advertising and marketing and venue costs we can put it towards equipment promotions you know um that's massive for the business and um, mm -hmm. where do we want to be in five years time I really just want to help more coaches launch their own business mm -hmm. and, uh, and get set up. Um, it's very difficult for, for me as a business owner, it's very difficult for me to give coaches the hours that will keep them, as we mentioned earlier. Um, if I can give them a business that they can run um, with the monthly subscription, with the continuity, with the whole back end to reduce the admin, mm -hmm. um, it means they have their own business. And 200 kids is a lot of children. Um, but I don't believe it is a lot. I think it's very, very achievable for most coaches if they have a, a really good program, if they believe in what they're doing and really know the program well, um, I think they can get to 200. And if that's 15, 20 hours a week, you've got a lot of spare time. And that's full-time money. That's... Mm -hmm. 50,000 pounds a year doing it that, like that. Mm -hmm. and, and again, I co I charge roughly about seven pounds a session in the mm -hmm. Northwest. Fantastic. Okay, Scott. Uh, well, first of all, thanks for coming on, sharing your, your journey with us, your story. Um, now, if any coach wants to connect with you or learn more about your company or maybe looks look into investing with you guys, how can they do that? What is the best way for them to connect? I like to plug. Um, yeah, just connect. Just uh, find us. So the web, uh, the email address is hello, hello at sportivos.co.uk. So okay. reach out to us. Um, I'm guessing you're going to put a link in the description. Um, well, we've yeah. got uh, obviously we've got our website. There's a little, there's a little, um, there's a little franchise nubbin on there. Um, okay. So yeah, just connect with us. We're on. Um, 
<laughs> Here comes George. We're on uh, we're on um, Facebook, uh, yeah, Instagram. We're in all the usual places. So, nice. Um, that's the first test for coaches if they're interested to come and find us. Perfect, perfect. We'll add all of that in the description so anyone can can um, can connect with you through there.